I want to bring in now Mark Heron. He is the senior counsel at the Center for Reproductive Rights, which is representing Kate Cox, her husband, and Kate's doctor. Uh, Mr. Heron, thank you very much for, for joining me today. I first want to start with what was your reaction, um, Mrs. Cox and her husband's reaction, when they heard this news last night? Sure. Thanks for having me, Simone, and thanks for spending so much time on this story. Your lead up, I, I could not have said any of that better than how you framed up this issue. Um, the Texas Supreme Court uh, last night, late last night, issued what's called an administrative stay. And what that signals is they need more time. These issues are uh, obviously something that they are thinking long and hard about, and they couldn't reach a decision in one day and issue something. It's obviously disappointing because we do strongly believe that Kate fits within the medical exceptions. As you say, her reproductive functions, uh, uh, reproductive system is a major bodily function. It clearly fits within the medical exception. And the idea, just taking a step back, that, that Kate had to come to court and ask for permission to get uh, essential health care, the health care that she needs to be able to expand her family in the way that she and her husband want. It's just, it's ridiculous uh, that that's where we are today. It is, it is absolutely ridiculous. I was on air guest hosting for the 11 p.m. last night when the news came down, and I, I was frankly shocked. And I immediately wondered what options uh, do Kate and her husband have now after this Supreme Court stay? Well, Kate's going to look at all of her options. Uh, right now, we are still focused on um, hoping to get a decision uh, quickly out of the Texas Supreme Court. Um, but look, Kate shouldn't have to explore options like going out of state. She should be able to get an abortion at home uh, with her doctor in her home community. Um, it, it, is, it is a human rights violation, right, for people to force someone like Kate to have to now explore what are the other possibilities that I have. What the state is trying to do is take away all of her options and force her conti to continue carrying a pregnancy that's not going to end in a healthy child at the end of the pregnancy. And so for all of the state's asserted interests in, um, you know, fetal life. This is not going to end in a, a, a healthy child. And, and in the meanwhile, if Kate is forced to continue this pregnancy, she's being exposed to health risks. Um, as you mentioned, if she has to have another C-section or if she is forced to give um, birth vaginally, she could have a uterine rupture. She could, she could lose her ability to have more kids in the future. And that is what she is so desperately trying to protect. Uh, Mark, have you heard from other uh, women in Texas? Are, are you worried that this hold will have a, a further chilling effect on women in the state who are seeking the reprodu reproductive care that they need? Well, look, doctors all across the state of Texas are already frightened. They are terrified to provide abortion care because here's what they face if they provide an abortion that violates the law. Up to life in prison, hundreds of thousand dollars in fines, losing their medical license, which means losing their livelihood. And even in these circumstances where the patient and the doctor together go to the court and ask the court for approval, and the court says, yes, you can move forward. And what happens? Ken Paxton, the attorney general of Texas, thumbs his nose at the court's order and sends a letter to hospitals threatening the hospitals with criminal penalties to, to discipline the hospitals um, and, and is, is just like expanding fear all across the state of Texas. His point is to frighten people into even not providing abortions that have been, that fit within the exception and that a judge has already approved. It is shameful. And of course, this is going to have a chilling effect all across the state of Texas. And it's putting the lives of pregnant people all across Texas in danger. 
It is noted in the initial filing that uh, Kate Cox actually reached out to your organization because she received the fatal diagnosis on the exact same day that there were oral arguments held in Zorowski v. the state of Texas. We have covered that extensively here, and for folks at home, that is the case where 20 women are actually suing Texas after being denied abortions during complicated pregnancies. You also filed that lawsuit. Can you give us an update on that and, and the connection between the two here? Sure. So my colleague argued that lawsuit in front of the Texas Supreme Court just last week. And as she was arguing that uh, in front of the Texas Supreme Court, that's when Kate Cox was getting her amniocentesis results. And that's what's led, led to this uh, filing of this new lawsuit. I, I, I want to just to connect the two lawsuits together. Look, the state was telling uh, you know, Ken Paxton's lawyers were telling the state of Texas, uh, the Texas Supreme Court last week, that, um, you know, all of those 20 women, none of them have standing. None of them can come to court and seek relief. But, you know, if someone is in the middle of a crisis, right, then they could file a lawsuit, which, let me just be clear, 99% of people undergoing a medical crisis do not have time to, to stop. Google, try to find a lawyer. Try to you know put together legal papers. This took a, a large legal team to to put this together and go seek a court approval. We've already been going through this process over a week, so this this cannot be the new normal that people undergoing medical crises now start to file all these lawsuits. But even when she did that, even when she went through all of that, what is the state of Texas doing? It's trying to kick her case out of court and saying even she doesn't have legal standing to sue. And um, it, it's just, it's completely absurd. And the point is, they're not, they don't want anyone to get abortions, it, regardless of what the exceptions say. They want no one. They, they want the exceptions to be effectively meaningless. Mm. Mark Heron, please come back with any updates that you have. We are going to continue to stay on this story in the days and weeks to come. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.